Mayorga. I play drums in Stone Sour. How are you? <laughs> so we are here at the kickoff date mm -hmm. of the um, you know states run here right. of the tour with Papa Roast. So you know, what are your expectations for the tour here in the states? I know Europe's been really successful for I you mean, guys. I mean, so far from what I'm. The feedback I've been getting about the shows that are coming up, like how they're doing sale-wise, I heard it's doing really good, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty, pretty shocked actually. It's pretty cool. I don't, I don't really go in with the high expectations. Oh, it's gonna do great, this, this, and that. I just, you know, I'm happy to be able to be here to play. I'll just show up and play. There's people who are great. You know? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, pretty excited about tonight, especially. I mean, um, I used to live here years ago, so this is like kind of a big deal for me. This show. I mean. My mom still lives here. My, some of my old friends from school are here, so exactly. it's gonna be cool to, to get to see them again after 25, 26 years. You know, since I haven't been here since. Wow. Yeah, eighty-seven is probably the last time I. Oh was my here. goodness. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna ask. I said I knew it was a hometown show for you, yeah. so that's crazy. sort of. I mean, yeah. I mean, I lived here. Only lived here for like six, seven years, but I mean, I consider it my second home because I, you know, did some of my growing years here too. You know, so yeah. It's really cool. That's really cool that it's starting off here. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's great. And, you know, how, how would you compare, you know, I mean, looking ahead to, you know, shows here in the States versus Europe? How do you, how do you feel there's a big difference? I mean, you think we're starting to catch up a little bit? <laughs> I, I, would, I mean, it depends because, I mean, a lot of uh, the crowd's definitely a little bit different here. Like, the reaction here is, I mean, way more violent. <laughs> I mean, um, the European crowd are more, uh, I wouldn't say tame, but they're, they're really, they're really, uh, they really uh, sing to all the mm -hmm. songs. They sing your guitar chords, they sing the lyrics, it's just crazy. I mean, they're, they're, both crowds are great. So, I mean, that's the only difference there. Okay. You know. Yeah, I know, I got we'll kill each other here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I asked so many people about the festival circuit. You it's know. on fire. The festivals in oh, Europe yeah. are ridiculous, man. I wish they had more stuff like that in the States. I mean, we have, sure, we have the radio festivals and stuff like that, but it'd be cool to have stuff like Grass Pop or Rock and Ring or stuff like that. You know, we just don't for some reason. Oh, know. Absolutely. Don't know why. So, you personally, how are you feeling these days? Um, well, since my little uh, episode, yeah, I feel great. I mean, it, it took me a while to get back to mm -hmm. normal. I mean, I was I was out for a good seven, eight months after uh, you know, I had that stroke happen to me. Uh, was, in fact, it was actually an hour after the show. I played in, um, in of all places, Des Moines, Iowa, mm -hmm. where the band's from. Um, yeah, pretty pretty shocking news of why you know my uh, doctor basically told me uh, you know after looking at his, my MRIs and CTs and saying like, well you. Basically, uh, you killed your artery to the back of your the artery back here in your neck mm -hmm. from years of yeah. that, like really violently, you know, shake, you know, bed bagging, basically. So it's like you gotta either stop doing that or take it easy on that. So I take it easy on that. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah. It's pretty scary, <laughs> man. I'm like, really? <laughs> I mean, I couldn't think of anything else. I mean, like I, I take care of myself. I don't do drugs. I don't, you know, drink heavy alcohol. I, eat good, so it was all pure neck injury. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean you've got to think, you see these, even these younger bands, I mean they're like throwing themselves I, all over I the stage. I tell everyone like now, that. I tell everyone now, like just be careful how you doing that. Just because Angus Young is doing it for 50 years doesn't mean you can. I used to think, okay, if he's doing it, <laughs> then I'm okay with it. Nah. Not everybody's the same. So. And your previous band was Soulfly too. Yeah. Right? I can only imagine how heavy oh, that was. <laughs> well, even before that, I mean, just playing in punk rock bands yeah. all through the '80s, and, and and you know, bands like Nausea, and actually even my even my first band when I was living here, a band called Youthquake. Oh. We used to play all places like West Caddy Playground and Caddy Shack and VFW halls, anywhere you can put up a hardcore show because it was pretty much outlawed at the time. You know, it wasn't really well accepted. It was very underground. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it was doing it back then so it's just years of wear and tear and I just finally hit the right combination of moves and it just mm. sent me down like a ton of bricks but well, well I'm I mean, cool now I mean it certainly shows solidarity too you know here mm. in Stone Sour that they've you know stuck with you and you yeah. guys have been able to continue on I mean, and like I said before it's a lot to be said I mean those, those those guys are my bros you know for them to do something like that I mean I expected them to go on with someone else and I was cool with it but they're like no way I'm not gonna go on with someone else until you get better. 
Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, you guys have just put out this fantastic new album, House of Golden Bones Part 1. What's in store for Part 2? I'm super excited. <laughs> part, you know, Part 2 it came out, I think, even stranger and darker sounding than Part 1. Really? Yeah, it's different. It's not, not as high energy as Part 1. Mm. Definitely meaner sounding Part 2, I think. So that's maybe where the anger comes out? I think so, yeah. In the, in the story where, it, that's where, it, yeah, the story kind of unfolds more in the second album. I'm not going to give any of that away, <laughs> so you guys are going to have to wait for that. It, come, it, come, well, it comes out in April, so it's not that far. No, no. And we got a comic book coming out at the same time on Dark Horse Comics. It's uh, the first issue, which is part one. When is that available? April. Okay, so, that's right gonna, so the, the comic book's going to be available in yeah, April, too. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, when you guys sat down to put this album together, I mean, how aware were you of following the storyline? Did that come first or second, like? Well, the thing is, Corey, Corey's been working on it for quite some time, and in the middle of that, I haven't really read any of it because he hasn't shown any of us. We just wrote music, and, mm -hmm. and just the lyrics happened to fit what we wrote at the time, you know what I mean? Wow. So it kind of just, you know, manifested itself. I mean, but Corey's written, you know, a good percentage of that record, so he really kind of fit what music, musically would fit with his lyrics, and with a couple songs that I've added, you know, I wrote, and Josh and Jim, you know, put their songs in there as well, and we just kind of made it all work and fit together, you know. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I was going to ask who kind of brought what to the table creatively there. Well, Corey, at first, had five songs right out the gate, and when, yeah. when, when uh, we first heard, like, stuff like Gone Sovereign and Absolute Zero, and Rumor Skin, Travelers, and all those songs. Like, I've heard those in demo form first with you know, a drum machine. But it was great. Though. I was just like, wow, this is really good stuff, like, totally different. So then when we got into a room together, we just you know, kind of put our own stamp on it and made it more alive. And, yeah. It's great. I know sometimes a lot of bands look at doing a concept album mm -hmm. as, as a bit of a risk sometimes. But right. to me, it seems like it's working now because I think fans are really becoming engrossed in the story and the character and. You know, they want to eat all that stuff up with the online elements and right. everything, and it's it's great. Well, I mean, also, like, you know, there's people out there that are really into, like, the series on TV, like, thing like Lost and, mm -hmm. and 24, stuff like that. So I think people out there have the attention span for a story. So to tie in a story, like what Corey wrote into the music that we're doing, I think it works great together. Absolutely. Yeah. So you have a personal favorite track off the album? I'm really... At the moment, I mean, I love all of them, but I'm really enjoying playing Rumor Skin live. It's a really fun track live. Nice. So are we going to hear a lot live on the tour? Yeah. You're definitely going to hear a decent chunk off the first album. Not, you know, not every song, but obviously you'll hear God Sovereign and Absolute together. That's pretty much how we start the set. Sorry to give it away. <laughs> um, but we do also like a couple more songs, like three or four more songs off the new album. And stuff off of, the best stuff of of every other record before that, like stuff off the Color of May, first off, off the first album, stuff off of Audio Secrecy, so we kind of tie it all in. Nice. It makes a nice, punchy roller coaster of a set. That's good. Does that make any sense? <laughs> <laughs> so, I never heard of a punchy roller coaster, but you, you get the idea. That's a new one, we'll coin it. <laughs> punchy, I guess, meaning energy, yeah. roller coaster as in the ride. Okay. <laughs> Got that cleared. So, being that we're a pop culture website, we're engrossed in all things pop culture. Is there anything particularly you can't get enough of these days? And on, 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 on what? Is there anything in particular in pop culture that you can't get enough of these days? Mm. Wow. <laughs> can't really say, but uh, <laughs> watching Yo Gabba Gabba and Elmo. <laughs> That's my pop culture right there. Well, I was going to have a, a, a daughter right now. That's what she's into. Um, pop culture... Mm. You know, I don't really watch a lot of television, to be honest, except for what I just said, because it's in front of me, but most of the time I'm uh, just, I don't watch television, I watch movies. Okay. So I'm really not engrossed in that as much. What's the last good movie you saw? Hmm, last good movie I've seen, I think The Avengers, I thought it was great. Okay, it's a good one. I don't get to go see movies either. <laughs> <laughs> well, very, very busy. Yeah, so. no, I mean... <laughs> I mean, honestly, when I'm home, I really don't get to see a lot of movies. I don't really have the TV on a lot because of the little one. I mean, mm -hmm. I do have it on just because she wants to watch Elmo or Sesame Street. That's it. 
but most of the time we play and I just hang out with my daughter that's and my cool. wife. That's How it. old is your daughter? She's uh, 17 months. Oh, that's yeah. cute. <laughs> yeah. So for you personally, do you have a pivotal music moment that occurred in your life that made you decide that you wanted to pursue it for a career? Mm -hmm. What was it? When was it? Mm -hmm. You know, when I understood that it could be a career, when I realized it, it could be a career, I think I was probably about 14 or 15. And uh, that's probably around the time where I quit high school and started taking drums a little bit more seriously and you know played in bands, toured. And that's probably about the, about the time, yeah. Do you remember the first album you purchased with your own money? <laughs> uh, with my own money. Love Gun, Kiss. Nice. Yeah, before that, it was all like Zeppelin, Black Sabbath. I had an older brother, so I had a little bit of help with that. You were stealing in his collection. Well, we didn't that. just jam out in our room listening to it. I'd be playing drums to you know Zeppelin, then Lizzie and Kiss. That's all I was really into at the time. I was a total seventies kid. You know, eighties came around. I was more into punk rock, underground, avant-garde music. A lot of uh, soundtrack music. I listened to like you know John, anything John Carpenter was doing at the time, or got into Wendy Carlos because I I saw The Shining at. <laughs> At the theater the first time ever when it came out, and I'm like, okay, I, I love soundtracks. So that 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 whole element. And you do like, some of that yourself, I do, yeah. right? Actually, in fact, I did a lot of that kind of work, that kind of cinematic, kind of ambiance, sounds and segues on on Moose's last two records. So a lot of sounds like synthesizers and stuff. I did all that. So is there anything in that realm that you're working on right now, or? No, right now I'm just just touring. I really don't have. Time. I, I need the time and headspace to really sit down and get behind keys and stuff. But I mean, I do have like a little portable um, rig, like a laptop and an box and you know a little MIDI controller where I can you know do my synth work and programming and writing and stuff like that. If I have an idea in the middle of the night, I can just turn it on and play. It. It's nice. Technology's good. <laughs> So, you know, being that you've been, you know, involved in music for so long, you know, how do you feel about the uprise of social media now, <clears throat> you know, as a tool for, for artist promotion and sharing yeah, music and, you know, all that fun stuff? That's <laughs> that's great. I mean, I wish, that, I wish there was something like that for, for me back, you know, when I was starting out like that. I mean, back then it was just pen to paper and you send a tape, no CDs. <laughs> uh, I think it's great. I mean, it's definitely helping a lot of bands and that whole kickstart thing is pretty cool. You know, I, I totally back it. Absolutely. Yeah, I know a lot of people have criticized that the shroud of mystery has been lifted from rock and roll. That's somewhat. the one thing that, 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 that is downside to me, mm -hmm. for me. Yeah, the whole myst mysticism is gone, but you know, it is what it is. Oh, absolutely. So when this tour wraps up, or what are the plans for the rest of this year? Have you guys gotten that far yet? Or as far as I know, after this we go right to Australia for a couple of weeks and uh, a little bit of a break. I think we do the states, pick up the states again, and then uh, do Europe, all the festivals, and a little bit of a Europe run. Yeah. Nice. Well, I'm gonna thank you so much for taking a few minutes out to speak with me. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you.